models. So for normal broadcast, you don't really use tube compressors. You use like... Uh... Use more interest and reliability. So this console, it, it take, handles up to 96 microphones. It has 96 compressors and 96 gates built into it. So I just, I don't even have that patch cable. I just punch it in and it's there. And they're SSL compressors. They're really good compressors. The, what, where the digital consoles fall down, the cheaper digital consoles, are, is in the processing. The compressors and the gates don't sound that good. On these things, they sound wicked because it's, it's SSL. It's like a Rolls Royce. Like when, when people are phoning around to book a truck, um, and they, the first question is, what console do you have? And what recording system do you have? And when we say SSL, end of conversation. Like, there's not, okay, that's good. Let's, let's move on. Because well, it's like, say, what, what car have you got? Oh, we've got a Lamborghini. Okay, that'll do. We got called to go down to Madison Square Garden in New York three years ago to record a Japanese band called Lark on CL. It was doing a huge, big concert there. It was a big deal for them to be playing in New York. And so they wanted to film it. And so we get this call from the producer from Japan, well, from New York, actually, and, and uh, they bring us down. And once I get down there, I actually talk to the guy. I said, well, there's six trucks in New York. Like, how, could, how did we end up with this gig? Like, why did you bring us all the way down from Toronto? And he says the engineer wanted to use the same console that he used on the record. And this is the console he used in Tokyo to cut the record. So when he heard that you had a C200 in the truck, he said, let's hire those guys. I can use all my settings that I used on the record. And that's what they did. So that's, that, this has gotten us gigs. We did Kenny Chesney in New Jersey a couple years ago and for Live Nation and the engineer, when they saw our equipment list, that this got us the gig over a truck out of New York because none of the other trucks, the trucks are going more for computer gear now and, and we're, we've still got a real, they always, oh, it's a real console that we can patch stuff into and fader, you know, it's not, I'm not mixing with a mouse. mouse, it's a real console. So that it's gotten, it was very expensive. I mean, I paid more for this console than I paid for my house. How much does this console cost? It's $420,000. So you don't live in Toronto. <laughs> well, I did. I, I was, the thing is our house has tripled in value in the 20 years we've been there and this thing's cut half of its value, you know, it's, it's depreciated, so... I, my wife never fails to remind me that we paid more for this than we paid for our house. Yeah, it's gotten us gigs. I mean, it, it gets us work over the other trucks that we're competing against. Because any job we bid on, there's two or three other guys bidding on it. So you can't go in there with a Radio Shack console and get work, you know. So um, good stuff is not cheap and cheap stuff is not good. <laughs> it comes down to that. So, so um, yeah, it, it was a big bite for an individual most of these SSLs I mean CBC has a couple of these there's no individual in Canada that owns an SSL console <laughs> I mean it's a it's a pretty expensive piece of gear to buy but I knew it would be the last console I'd buy and I've been totally happy with it it sounds great on the air we're often doing shows where there's two audio trucks on the show where we're doing some of the bands and the other trucks doing other bands and then we're feeding the video truck our signal and the guy in the video truck will say I can hear the difference between your truck and that other truck I can hear how clear your mic pre's are and how much bottom end there is coming out of your... He says it's, it's really noticeable when you when we're switching back, A being back and forth between two consoles. So that, you know, you second-guess yourself, and I, I haven't second-guessed myself on this purchase at all. You know. So are these made in the UK? or? Yeah, made in Oxford. And uh, they, they brought, when I bought it, they brought a guy came and spent uh, three days here. He spent two days installing it, and then he spent a day training me and my crew on how to run it. And uh, same guy, Thomas Jensen is his name. He's a D Danish guy, and uh, such. But he'll be up. Uh, he'll phone a couple of years ago. He phones. I'm in Toronto. I'm working on the CBC consoles. You want to go out for lunch while I'm here, and I'll, I'll update the software in your console. Fine. I'm buying lunch. So that, that type of thing. I mean, it's way past the warranty, but they've been fabulous with, with the service. They've got newer stuff out now. Everything's slightly smaller, um, more powerful. Um, but this is still a current production console. They, this is not at a production. This is the console they use on the David Letterman show and on the on the uh, Stephen Colbert show, and um, it's it's still in, in production. So they still support it. C two hundred. And uh, and it's it, it was the top of the line when they built it. it was their top of the line broadcast console. But this was not made to be uh, trucked around. Like it's, well, on, it's on bogies and stuff or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> but they knew it would be used in trucks. I mean, I mean, there's the, the truck in Montreal has one of these. Truck in Halifax has one of these. Like, how are these mounted? I, I, it's tied in with aircraft straps. We, we had to, we, we, we took the original legs off it and had these legs custom built and put wheels on them. So if I have to do service on it, I can wheel oh, it out from I the gotcha. wall. This thing has not been off this wall in over a year. I'm trying to think of the last time I actually undid those aircraft straps. Because I run into stuff with this console before a lot of other guys do because it, it's being driven across the country and it's being powered up in cold weather and powered up in hot weather. And um, they... They were, um, one of the reasons I got a deal on this console. At $400,000. Yeah, was 
here's what happened. I, I was shopping around for a new console because I needed a surround sound. A lot of the gigs were surround sound. The console I had was 50 inputs, stereo, analog. And I thought, I need something with more inputs. I need something that does surround sound. And I need something that has memory recall so that I can, um, you know, if I'm doing a, a show with 15 different bands, I can do the sound check and set it and then store that and then store the next band. So I was looking at Studer, Euphonics, Lavo, which is a German company, and, um, uh, no, sorry, Neve. Those were the four that, that were kind of in the running. And I had pretty much chosen the Lavo because they've, they've come on really strong in the last few years. And I was about two weeks away from signing the contract for this Lavo console. And then SSL in New York phoned me up. They're, they're a broadcast guy. I said, here you're in the market for a console. I said, why didn't you call us? And I said, well, same reason I didn't call Rolls Royce when I bought my van. Like, I didn't want to insult you with my budget. And they said, no, 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 no. He says, we really want to get one of these into a truck because it would be a good sales tool for us for it to be traveling around. So they knew about you. Yeah. And and uh, I don't know how they heard about it. And 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 then uh, and they said, we're bringing one of these consoles to New York City to a trade show, and we don't really want to have to ship it back to England after the show. So we're, we'll cut you a deal on that console on the condition that you let us know when you're traveling out of town because um, we might be able to alert some engineers. Like if you're going up to Montreal, we could phone some people and say, hey, this console's going to be in Montreal. If, if we can bring some tech people in. I said, sure, I'll do that all day long. They cut me a deal. So that's kind of what happened. They gave me a deal. And we've had situations where we were uh, going down to uh, Las Vegas to do a thing. And they said, can you stop in Salt Lake City on the way? Because the people at the Mormon Tabernacle are interested in buying one of these. We'll pay for the hotel, we'll pay for your food and stuff, but if you can just detour through there on the way down, sure. So we spent a day at the Norman, Mormon Tabernacle, and their guys came in, and we played them a couple of things, and they took us in. So I've done that for them over the years, and it's, it's been a very, very good relationship between the so two. So goodwill. Yeah, goodwill, and and uh, we do a lot of big-ticket shows, so they can put that up on the SSL website that, oh, look, these guys are doing Coldplay, or they're doing, you know... Uh, uh, Imagine Dragons, or they did. We did the new Rush DVD with this with this console, and that got us a lot of press. So are they so, still together? I thought they broke up. That's right. Rush. I thought they broke up. Well, we did their the, the, we last, did the last one. The last one, the, the forty, the R forty show at the ACC. We did their final concert DVD. Okay. So so that was a big deal. That was a ninety six input show it was with Bill Bottrell and the or Dave Bottrell, I should say, in the truck, the producer. So so um, and again, then we got that gig because of the SSL, basically. So. Um, it's it's been a good relationship between the two companies. I'm I, I'm sure that we've sort of helped each other out, and uh, I, I'm on really good terms with those guys. So we we, we uh, whenever we're in New York, they they come down and hang. So it's good.